just made this stocking and crochet and I thought it would be fun to do a knit mimic. So I am going to be using the City Tweed Erin, the heavy worsted weight to do this knit stocking today. And this is the white spruce stocking. So if you haven't seen the crochet one and you do crochet, check that one out. This will be the knit version. The supplies can be purchased from We Crochet for the yarn. And then I've also got some knitting needles. This is the 5.0, so US 8 knitting needles. I'm going to be using the magic loop method. So I've got them on a longer cord. You'll need a stitch marker, um, a needle to sew in those ends, some scissors. And if you prefer um, some leather for the top of this in order to hang it. I like the look of the leather, but you can always do an eye cord to substitute that. So let's go ahead and get started. To get started, I'm going to do a long tail cast on of 48 stitches. If you've never done a long tail cast on, I have a link in the pattern to learn to do so. Now I'm going to be working in the round for this pattern and I'm going to be using the magic loop method. And I'm gonna go ahead and split this in about half on the front and the back of my loop. And now I'm simply going to be working around and around for this top cuff. We'll be working on the ribbing. So our ribbing will be done in one by one ribbing. So that means we will knit and purl every other stitch. Make sure that nothing is twisted on your needles before you get started. And then simply begin by knitting the first stitch. And if you need to use a stitch marker, feel free to keep track of your rounds. Knit the first stitch and purl the next stitch. Knit and purl. We're going to repeat that all the way around and we're going to continue working in this one by one rib until our top cuff is for approximately four inches in length. So keep working this, enjoy a TV show or something until this ribbing is four inches in length. So now that we worked our cuff portion, it's time for us to start working on the leg. And the leg is really exciting because we get to go into that color work. So before we start knitting, I want to talk about this chart. So as you look at the chart, it's worked from bottom up and from right to left for every single round. Every single round will start from this bottom right hand corner and work to the left. And you will repeat each section three times. This only says 16 stitches. And of course we have more than 16 stitches on our needles. So this is simply a repeat. After doing round one and doing each section three times, we'll go to round two, starting from the right to the left and repeat that three times. So that's how you would work from the chart. Now the chart is completely worked in the knit stitch, so we won't have any more purl stitches and each stitch will be worked in knit. Based off the chart or the written instructions, my first round will be to knit in the first stitch and then I'm going to knit for 15 in our um, lighter color. But since we are working in Fair Isle, we don't want to have a really, really long float on the back for 15 stitches. It will cause some issues with our color work. It will possibly pull on some stitches. And if we were to try to put anything into the stocking, it would catch on really long floats. Now, in order to catch the floats, and I do like to work color work where I hold one yarn in one hand and one yarn in the other, and try to keep your dominant color in your left hand if you do like to do it this way. But I wanna be able to catch, and I did here on my first stitches on the back here, I wanna be able to catch this um, blue color on the back of my work so that it doesn't cause any gauge issues and our floats aren't really, really long. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do that. When I insert my needle into my next stitch, I'm going to lay the color I want to catch across my needle and then work around with the color I'm going to knit and then simply bring that other color back that you're just catching. Once you do that, you still have your correct color stitch, but on the back, it's caught that yarn so that your floats are nice and they don't get too long. I like to catch every depending on what project I'm working, every two to three stitches. 
And that way it's just not having too long of floats. The other thing you can do to help your tension and your gauge is you can take your work and if you're working in the magic loop or even with DPNs, you can flip it inward. Notice how I just flipped it. And now when I'm working, my work, my right side is still facing me as I'm working, but my um, stitches, the way that they're floating, I can see on this side. And what that does is when you keep your color work where the floats are behind right here, that helps so that they don't get too tight. It gives them a little bit of extra space versus having them having your work a bit closer. It kind of makes the, the floats a little bit farther away. So then if I were to catch my yarn, just like that, and as you get comfortable with that, it gets much, much easier. It took some practice and I'm still working on it in working one color in one hand and one color in the other, but I do recommend it. I do feel like it goes a bit faster for myself. I can keep my hands on my yarn, but it was a bit of practice and I'm still practicing. I still don't feel fast. I'm not um, as good of a thrower as I am a picker. So it's just something I like to try to get better at. So go ahead and work the leg portion in color work, working around and around, either from the color chart, the written instructions, or the color blocks. And then come on back once you've worked that color work section, and we'll talk about what to do with that heel area. So I've worked the leg portion, and my color work inside of here is looking fantastic. I'm really liking how this is working up. And now it's time to deal with the heel before we start the foot. Now what you want to do is grab a scrap piece of yarn. I always like using a cotton yarn because it doesn't stick as you um, remove it later down the road. So grab a piece of scrap yarn or a stitch holder. Now I've placed my scrap yarn onto a yarn needle and this is what we're going to do for this round. We're going to be placing some stitches onto a stitch holder scrap yarn, casting on some stitches, and that's going to create an opening for our heel. We're going to finish the round and then we're going to go on to working the foot and we're going to come back and work this heel later. So what you'll want to do is you want to take the next 22 stitches from your needles and place them on a stitch holder. Now that I've got all of my stitches on the scrap yarn, what I like to do is remove my yarn needle and I tie this off just because I don't, <laughs> I live with kids and a dog and I don't feel comfortable just leaving the ends. I feel like one of them is going to pull it and take off with it. So I just tie in a bow that I can easily undo later and I kind of shove it inside. So those 22 stitches are on a stitch holder and now we're going to want to cast on 22 stitches onto our needle. I am working on very, very short needles here. I know like it's just personal preference. Not many people may like to do all of this on one short needle, but I like having it all tight in there without having to always do the magic loop where I'm let, letting the yarn drop from my hands as I turn and start each half of each row. So let's cast on, thumb cast on 22 stitches. Now that I've casted on 22 stitches, it's time to simply knit the rest of this round still using the color A, so the white color. So I'm simply going to just knit right into my next stitch and you'll notice that I do like we're having the right side kind of face inside here as I'm working in the round and this is the wrong side on the outside and it really just helps those floats be more consistent. So I'll just continue to knit this round all in the color A until I get back to the beginning of the round again and my stitch marker fell out. I'll put it back in but I would have had a stitch marker there for the beginning of the round. Now that I'm back around, I'm ready to start round 53. And for the rest of the foot area, you can work it either from the written instructions, the chart instructions, or the block color work instructions. So I would start by using my color B for the first stitch. And I'm simply just working across these stitches that we did a thumb cast on. So you're going back simply working um, the way we did for the leg of this pattern, where you're working the stitches on your needles, um, in that uh, color work instruction. And remember, each section of that color work is repeated three times. So continue to work this in this Fair Isle color work, enjoying whatever show you like, um, knitting this however you like. Once I get going here, I like to once again do uh, one color in one hand and one color in the other hand. And don't forget to catch those floats every so often 
so that you don't have really big float carries on the inside of the stocking. So go enjoy, do the foot instructions for this part. And then when you come back, we will be decreasing for the toe. Now that we are down to the toe, we can go ahead and we can fasten off the blue color. We're just going to work in our white for the toe. So go ahead and knit the first round of the toe, just normal, knit one round in white. Now that I've done one round in white, it's time for us to start decreasing for this toe. So to do so, we are going to start by knitting two together and then knitting six. And that's what we are going to repeat all the way around. So knit two together, knit six. And then the next round, we're just going to do as a knit round. So do the knit two together, knit six, all the way around, do one round of knit, and then come on back. So we've decreased to 42 stitches and we're going to go ahead and continue to decrease. So for this round, we're going to knit two together and then knit five and then repeat that all the way around. So knit two together and knit five. And then after this round, do one round of knit. This will decrease from 42 stitches to 36 stitches. And now for round six, we are going to knit two together and then knit four. And this will decrease from 36 stitches to 30. And then the round after this will be knit, just knit around. So at the end of round six, we actually have 30 stitches. At the beginning, we have 36. So now we're ready for um, round eight because we've done one round in solid knit. And for round eight, we're going to knit two together and then knit three. And we'll repeat that all the way around. Knit two together, and then knit three. This will decrease from 30 stitches to 24 stitches. And then after round eight, do the next round, just knitting all the way around. Now for round 10, we are going to knit two together, and then knit two, and repeat that all the way around. This will decrease from 24 stitches to 18 stitches. And then the next round, do one round of solid knit. For round 12, we are going to knit two together and then knit one. And we're going to be repeating that all the way around. And at the end of round 12, we will have 12 stitches. And then we will do one more round in the solid knit and then come on back. Now for our very last round, we are going to knit two together in every stitch around. And then at the end of this round, we will have six stitches. Then we'll be ready to fasten off and close this opening. So grab your tapestry needle and we are simply going to weave through the remaining life stitches and then we will pull this opening closed. So I'm just going to weave through the stitches that are left, taking them off my needles. And now that they are off, see we have this hole, we simply pull that tight and weave in our end and we've got a nice toe. Our next step is this heel. I'm going to go ahead and place the live stitches back onto my needles and then we're gonna pick up some stitches. So after placing my uh, stitches that were held back onto my needles, I went ahead and picked up one stitch on each corner and the 22 stitches below. So I picked up one on the corner, 22 stitches, then one on the corner. You might find you have some gaps on the corner. Don't worry about that too much. We can use our ends to close any of those gaps later. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to knit, finish knitting this round. And so we're having one round of solid white. Now that we have 46 stitches on our needles, we're going to start decreasing this heel. So we're going to start by doing a slip, slip, knit, then knitting 19, and then we're going to knit two together. And then we're going to repeat that one more time for this round. So we will do a slip, slip, knit, then 
knit 19 and then knit two together. So we have decreased from 46 to 44 stitches and we're going to do that same method again. We're going to slip, slip, and then knit. And this time we will knit 17 and then knit two together and then repeat that again. And now we're going to do that again. We're going to do a slip, slip, knit, and then we'll knit 15, and then we will knit two together, and you repeat that one more time. And we're going to keep working in that same pattern, doing a slip, slip, and knit. And then we will knit 13 and knit two together. And we're going to be repeating that again one more time for this round. And then for round six of the heel, we are going to do a slip, slip, knit, knit 11, and then knit two together. At the end of this round, we will have 26 stitches. We're just simply decreasing by four on every single round. And then for round seven, we'll do a slip, slip, knit, and then knit nine, and then knit two together. And this will bring us to 22 stitches. And then for round eight, we're going to do that again. We're going to slip, slip, and knit. Knit seven and knit two together. At the end of round eight, we will have 18 stitches. Now that we have 18 stitches left on the needles, we are going to go ahead and fasten off with a decent tail because we are going to be doing the Kitchener stitch to graph these together. So go ahead and place your tail end onto a tapestry needle. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into this first front needle loop as if to purl and we're going to pull the yarn up. Then we are going to go into this back needle as if to knit and we're going to pull the yarn through. We haven't taken anything off yet and that's what we want. Now we are going to go through the front needle as if to knit and take that stitch off. Next we will go through the front loop as if to purl and leave that on. And then we do the back stitch purl wise and we're going to go ahead and pull that off. And then we will do the back stitch knit wise and we're going to leave this on. And we're going to be repeating those last four steps until we work all these stitches across. So let's do that again. For the front, we will knit, enter our needle as if to knit and pull that stitch off. Then enter the front a stitch as if to purl and leave that stitch on. Then we're going to enter the back loop on the back needle and purl and pull that stitch off. And then we're going to enter the back loop as if to knit, but leave that stitch on. And keep repeating those four steps until you've done all these stitches. Now when you've finished grafting those stitches together, go ahead and weave in your ends. And then I would do a blocking. I always think, especially with color work, you're going to want to block this. And then we'll come back and add that last detail. And now it's time for a tab so that we can actually hang this stocking. And I found these cute leather strips at Joann's. It's just a piece of leather that I'm going to be attaching so that it can be hung and also a great detail. This was just something I found in an aisle at Joann's. And then I also punched holes in it. I happen to have a leather punch where I punched four holes on each end of this leather strip so that I can go ahead and sew this to the top of the stocking. If you don't want to do this, you can also do an I cord. Um, this is what I thought would be a really, really cute detail. And you can pick up these supplies at your local craft store and then simply sew it to the top of your stocking just with a needle and some yarn. It's really simple to do. And I love this added textures detail to the stocking. And now we're done. 
and you have this beautiful stocking that you can display every single year. I love this classic look. Please be sure to hit subscribe and come back for more projects soon.